recording. All right, welcome to the Once Upon a Time in Huntsville podcast, hosted by yours truly, uh, Sanford Baranaga. Today, I have a very, 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 very special guest. Oh my goodness, you may have uh, seen him in uh, NCIS New Orleans this, uh, this past year. Maybe a couple uh, critically acclaimed short films. He's been nominated and won a couple of awards. Uh, his name is Prince and Drake. What's going on, everybody? Thank hey. you for having me. <laughs> hey, Princeton. What's going on? Uh, everything I said, you know, I'm still not impressed. So. <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking. Listen, listen. I try my best, but you know, sometimes it's just not good enough. It's yeah. just not good enough for you some people. You just keep proving that every <laughs> single day. You're just not good enough. Sorry to just let you down. <laughs> <laughs> no, Princeton uh, is right. just an awesome guy. If you know him, then you know he's an awesome guy. And it, it, by the time you're done with this, listening to this podcast, hopefully, hopefully you listen all the way through, you'll know that you'll just want to be buddies with the guy. Oh, um, thank you. Princeton, um, yes. ha- how's it? How you been doing, man? I've been good, man. Um, the best that I can be during these times. Yeah. Um, you know, the, these are weird times that we live in. Yes. But you know, I'm I'm still blessed. I'm still been able to do some acting projects, audition, and. Mm. Um, you know, spend time with my family and, and friends. And so, man, at the end of the day, I'm blessed. Yeah. I really am. So, hey, great attitude. Yeah. Wow. Way to start a podcast. I'm yeah. <laughs> now. Um, so uh, I've known you for quite a while. Yeah. Um, let's see, maybe f- five or four years. And then we've kind of become closer and closer in the past couple of years, yeah. I would say. I don't yeah, yeah, yeah. For say. sure. For sure. Pr- yeah. Princeton would probably see me on the street and look the other way and no, scurry no, off. No, no, no. I'm not that guy. I'm not no, that no, guy. No. <laughs> no um, but yeah. Do you ever get scared? I know this miss it. Do you ever get scared when you see some people in public? And it's not that you don't like them, but it's like you know that it's going to be a 20 minute ordeal. Yes. And then you walk away and you feel guilty like the rest of the day. You're just driving. You're like, I should have talked to that yeah, guy. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Actually, it's so funny. My mom, she used to get on me a lot about that because I would see people I know and she would be like, oh, why don't you speak? And I'm like, ah, you know, like I don't yeah. really want to, you know, talk today or, you know, or I may not, or I may just see someone and I'm like, oh, there's, what's the name? But like, I don't necessarily feel like I need to go and like have a conversation with them. So yeah, I yeah, definitely yeah. understand what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. It depends on what level of friendship you're on. I think Correct. sometimes you can just be like, oh, hey, and like yes. give them the, the hand, mm-hmm. give them the nod. Absolutely. And then like keep walking. Um, but yesterday actually I was, um, at the Publix, um, off of, um, uh, Zert Road, I think like in Madison, yeah, I was uh-huh. picking up a couple of flowers for my fiance. Okay. Congrats. Um, just cause I was in the dog <laughs> house. No, 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 no. Just because, <laughs> no, no, no. Just because she, uh, yeah, I like doing that from time yeah. to time. But anyways, and I saw, I used to work on the Publix over there on Whitesburg. Okay. And so I saw like a coworker I used to work with. And I was walking to check out and we made like eye contact, mm-hmm. like across, you yeah. know, across the room. And a moment of part of me was just like, just keep walking, just keep walking. <laughs> and I was like, no, I've already made eye contact right. with you Yeah, guy. so now you got to speak. <laughs> so I go over there. I walk over there. I'm like, hey, man, how you doing? He's like, I'm doing really well. They got you over here. And do, do you ever like have experience with people? Like for me anyways, yeah. I'm always like, like keep it brief. Yeah, life is good. Right. Like I'm not gonna tell you anything really, like, really personal going yeah, on or for anything. Sure. Yeah. And then some people are just like the opposite of that. They'll just tell like, you everything. They'll just like, <laughs> yeah. In this case, he doesn't listen to the podcast. I assume yeah. he was just like, yeah. Uh, it's not been a good year. I got divorced. Ooh. And I was like, oh, I'm oh sorry to hear that, man. He was like, yeah, it's good. I was like, <laughs> like uh, not that any of it's my business. Do you want to talk about it? And right. He was like, he was like, nah, it's all it's all good now. I was like, wow. okay, then why mention it? But <laughs> like, why did you put me right. in that situation? Right. And then now I don't have anything of the same effect that right. I had him. Because <laughs> it's like, anything. what do I say after? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh. Uh, you you've worked like in several like different places. Yeah, have you for worked sure. retail? Where? I have. I worked retail. Yeah. So from when I first moved back to Huntsville in 2014, I worked. Um, for Belk at Bridge Street. Oh, I worked okay. there for about two years. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I work retail. So I have a lot of experience with customers and customer yes. service and people sharing their life stories and things. But one thing about me that I, I can really say is that I, I'm a good listener. Yeah. So, you know, and I really try not to let what other people, you know, how they feel affect mm-hmm. me. You know, I just yeah. try to be there for them in that moment if I can. Yeah. So. Um, but, yeah, I have a lot of experience with yeah. those, man. They just, I'm sure you do. Have you ever gotten the... Uh, you know, if you're 
I, were you a cashier there? Did you ever like? Check yeah, in so there? I worked in. Um, I started in Saddle Saddle Bread, which is like uh-huh. the bulk brand, but it's mints basically. I worked oh, in okay. the mints department, and then I um, upgraded to the polo uh, polo department. <laughs> oh. So yeah. Have you ever gotten a guy or gal where you're checking them out? And you're like, you know, you're supposed to have like the big smile on earth. Yeah. Like, hey, how are you doing today? And they're just like, well, my dad died. Ooh. And you're just like, oh man. Well, uh, did you? Did you find everything okay? <laughs> like, yeah. No, you guys were out of rice a oh. oh, yeah. Sorry, is there anything I can do to help you? <sighs> what do you think? Man. So yeah. I've gotten a couple of those in my life, and you just, just keep on smiling. Yeah, you just keep smiling, man, and, you know, try to be a light for them in yeah, that moment, exactly. you know, because it's, you know, those those def- those conversations are very difficult, you know, yeah, and, yeah, and when, yeah. you, when you don't know them, it's even more awkward, you know, it's just like, yeah, uh, yeah, like, yeah I yeah, don't know what to say. I didn't you know, know this person. I was like, well, yeah. you know, I said, well, I'll be praying for you. Right. That's that's it. And they said, well, I hope it helps. <laughs> well, I was like, OK, you know what? I'm they sorry. just having a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever gotten yeah. like I'm, I'm going off on a tangent oh, no, here. Good, I just bro. had something pop up. Have you ever had like uh like a crazy couponer come in or something where they're like like obviously like the coupon mm-hmm. is like two years old, you can't use a ma'am and, yeah. or sir or whatever. And they just like they start like throwing excuses at you. Like they get mad with you. Have you ever had anyone like that before? I have I've had a couple of those type of situations um mm-hmm. where they want to use the coupon for, you know, a certain clothing brand yeah. and it's excluded so they can't use yeah. the coupon so it's like <laughs> you're trying to explain it to them and it's like and even on the coupon it'll say you know and usually yeah i worked in polo so polo was always like you can't use the coupon yeah. on polo you know and so they're always trying to like get over on you and things like that mm-hmm. and so um luckily i never had anything too crazy you know yeah. where i had to like call mm-hmm. like you know someone to help me out you know but you know you do have those type of situations where someone's trying to get over on you or the coupon is expired. Yeah. They can use it. So I yeah. once had a lady. Uh, so I, I so I worked at a cashier, and then they moved me over to behind the desk. And behind yeah. the desk is where you deal with the problems that a cashier couldn't handle. Okay. So they brought this lady over to me, and it was just me. And <laughs> she was, you know, we couldn't take your coupons because yeah. if we took them all, we would end up owing her money. And as wow. a business, you know, you can't do that right. all the time. So I tried to explain her that, and she just kept on. And, you know, this is not fair. This is not fair. And then she started, like, throwing, like, weird, like, things that have happened to her in her life at me. Like, she oh, was man. like, you know, I was in a wheelchair once. I shouldn't be treated like this. Oh, and I was like, well, you've experienced miracles. Oh, life, right. <laughs> I didn't say that, but I wanted yeah, to Yeah, so but you're badly. thinking that, yeah. Because I'm like, well, you got better. Right. But <laughs> I was like, man, I just, I can't, I, yeah. I just can't give it to you. Like, right. What if, what's happened in your personal life? That Keep that personal. Right, Don't absolutely. Like, world. has nothing to do with this situation here. But, um, <laughs> and then right now you work at, you, you're a box, a uh, box. Yeah, teacher, yeah. Right? So, um, I am a kickboxing and uh, boxing instructor at Nine Round Fitness in Madison. Um, and it's great, man. I, I love that job. I love um, working with the members there, yeah. you know, and honestly, it just helped me with my own fitness journey. Yeah. Uh, when I started, I was about 20, 25 pounds over, you know, mm-hmm. overweight or, you know, heavier. Yeah. And, um, but doing that, man, just really kind of like freed me. It's a great stress reliever. Yeah. And then just connecting with other people and helping them reach their fitness goals, yeah. you know, um, and, and motivating them and encouraging them. And usually, you know, people stick with it for about six, months to a year Mm -hmm. of doing you know that that type of workout and so you really get to see the transformations man even in their body but their mind their mentality Mm -hmm. their attitude and so it's it's a great job man do you think you could train me to be world champion you know i don't know you know you kind (laughs) of that would be a great movie premise you know maybe we can you know put it into a movie and do some acting in it you know i don't know if i can train you to be like the next rock or dwayne johnson you know but you're telling me (laughs) right now I, i will never look like the rock Listen, I'm not going to say never. <laughs> I'm just going to say, you know, you might have to get on the roids. And I'm just I saw, I, <laughs> don't I read an article that he le- he eats like one third of like the, like some fish. Oh, wow. Like population. Uh-huh. Just because like he consumes that in like chicken breast all oh, day. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, And then he has like his own gym that like goes with him mm-hmm. to wherever he goes, which is like awesome. I'm a big fan of The Rock. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because he's from the U. He was, he <laughs> oh, played, gosh. he played football. He and did. then, uh, I mean, he just seems like a fun guy to work with. Yeah. But, um, oh, you know what I saw? Yeah. Speaking of boxing. Yeah. You know, I told you I read that interview that you did with uh, Teen Music Insider. Yes. And one of the things that you said, uh, I can't remember the context or what the what question they asked you, but um, 
you said that you would really love to play uh, Evander Holyfield in yes, a movie. Yes, 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 yes. So originally I wanted to, um, which is so weird because I wasn't even boxing during this time, but uh-huh. about six years ago I was just just like doing research on online and I came across uh, Jack Johnson, who was uh-huh. a boxer um, yeah. back in the day. And I just started like, you know, reading up on him and his story and his life. And I was like, man, like I would love to play him in a movie one day. Yeah. And then I saw recently this year that uh, Mahershala Ali is going to be playing him. Is he really? Yeah. So I, I don't know like all the details of it, but I saw that they were or maybe the, considering him for the role. Oh, okay. I'm not really sure all the details of it. And so I was like, man, like, well, not saying like that there goes that dream, yeah, but I'm yeah, like, yeah. man, it's Mahershala Ali, man. He's, Dude, he's, oh, yeah. I mean, he's Just keep giving everything, man. He's everything. Did you so. see he's going to be Blade too? I did. It, that's going to be dope. Yes, I did. And it's on my vision board, and I do want to work with him in that movie. Yeah, because so. they'll probably most yeah. likely shoot some parts in Atlanta. So yeah, Atlanta or maybe know. New Orleans. I don't know. Yeah. But I, it's, it's on my vision board, man. I Dude. put it on my vision board um, almost feels like, well, last year, so a, a good year. Yeah. And um, yeah, man, I, I would love to work with him. Um, but yeah, I saw, so I, when I saw that, I was like, well, you know, who's another boxer whose story hasn't been told through film, you mm-hmm. know, and like complete his, his complete life story. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I, I'm tall, you know, uh-huh. African-American male, kind of built, bald head, you know, I was like, <laughs> hey, yeah. Evander Holyfield, yeah, you know. Yeah, why and not? So, um, so yeah, man, I, I would love to do that. I, I love those type of movies, man. I love yes, telling yeah. the story of like a real life person and then um, just being able to connect with them, mm-hmm. you know, and like, obviously I would do my research. I would reach out to him if I ever got the opportunity. I would love to spend time with him if I ever got the opportunity, yeah. man, just to, to make it more real, you know? That'd so, be so cool. Maybe get in the ring with him. Yeah, get in the <laughs> ring with him. Because listen, I only do boxing and kickboxing as far as just you know, fitness wise, you know, I don't do it to like compete, Yeah, you know, which is a different, a whole nother different lane. But, um, I I would imagine like, you know, I wonder if I could take a real hit like that. You know what I mean? I don't think I could personally. (laughs) Yeah. Have you ever seen the film warrior? Yes. Um, Yeah. yeah. That's it. I think that's MMA. I I watched that earlier this week and they're just like taking kicks and knees to the head. I would just be before they even hit me, I'd be like, please, yeah, please stop. But, uh, yeah, so I have, I have a big respect Uh, and you know, boxers just because you have gloves on doesn't mean that thing yeah it doesn't man it doesn't (laughs) yeah it hurts you i I remember when i was training for my job with nine round Mm -hmm. um there was a a trainer there named noah Mm -hmm. he was a young guy um i think he was like 18 at the time um but he was he was very like small like he was skinny but he was so strong Uh and i remember we were training and we were doing round kicks um with the pad and he kicked me so hard like and i'm a i'm like 230 you know i'm a big guy but he kicked me so hard, like it knocked the wind out of me. Oh my gosh. And yeah. he's like, you know, he actually he's an MMA fighter, but oh, okay. just looking at him, you wouldn't think like, oh, like, you know, I'm not judging him, but I'm just yeah. saying, like, I wasn't expecting that yeah. that powerful kick like that. You know what I mean? So I can just imagine like real MMA fighters and boxers like taking those hits, man. You gotta have some gotta have some strength, man. <laughs> yeah, and a little uh little insanity up in the yeah. head, I think too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I was gonna ask you, are there any other like real life people that you would like to portray like or do you have anyone else in mind hmm. good question man there's there's so many that i guess i would love to play um oh gosh i know yeah that's a big question yeah it's a big you question ask me that, I'd be yeah like, oh there's so many yeah it's like there's so many like i would love personally i would love to do like a I don't know about who, but like, I would love to do a true story about like a musician because like, oh, I'm not a musician, okay, mu- yeah. musician, but I would, that would be a great opportunity to right. learn how to do something. Right. Uh, like I would love to, like, I'm a big Led Zeppelin guy. So like, okay, I yeah. would love to just like do any of those mm-hmm. like roles or like just be in a movie about that Yes. or any other musician. Cause I think that'd be cool to get paid to learn how to play guitar yeah. or like piano or something like that. That would be amazing. Um, uh, but there's so much of history and so mm-hmm. many different, yeah, it'd be hard to, that'd be a hard one to pick. Yeah. I'm trying to think who I could see you as, <laughs> uh, you could always do one of yourself. You know, <laughs> I could, some may call it vain. Some yeah. may think you have a big ego, but yeah, <laughs> So I did a movie a couple of years ago, uh-huh. um, and uh, it was it was a part of well it was a part of the Super Science Showcase series, yeah. and one of the guys uh, he was uh, I, he was he's not my friend but I saw it on Facebook but he made a comment, 
And he said that looking at me, he said I he thinks that I could play if Morpheus had a son, oh. I could play his son. Yeah. And I was like, I never thought about that before. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it was cool. He was like, I just my performance reminded him of Lawrence Fishburne a yeah. little bit. And so he was That's like, a great compliment. He's yeah. an outstanding man. Actor. He's a legend. A oh, legend, yeah. like one of my favorites. He's also on my vision board and someone that I would love to work with. Yeah, um, I actually saw that they have um, a spinoff coming with him and Jennifer Lewis. I believe it's called o- Odish. Okay. Like he's a part of the, um, I think that's the name of the spinoff. It's, Is it Odish. a spinoff of The Matrix? No, no, no. It's the spinoff of the, the television show Blackish. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's like they have Blackish. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. And so I think it's the Odish is going to be about the, the parents. Oh, okay. Yeah. I saw that uh, yesterday um, briefly just browsing on Instagram. That's awesome. And so I was like, man, I would love that opportunity. You yeah. Know, he's someone who's been in the industry a very, very long time. And um, someone that, you know, growing up watching has been just like... You know how you have like people who are like a, a dad or mother in your head? Yeah, like he's yeah, like that. Yeah, he's like sure. a dad in my head, you yeah. know what I mean? Like someone who I always watch and I learn from and I, I like I study his acting, yeah. you know. And um he's just very important to me, man, and I w- I would love the opportunity to like work with him one day. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure yeah, I'm sure there'll be plenty. I yeah. mean, he works all the time. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, he, it's just yeah. a matter of time, really. Listen. Besides him, like who else? Oh, Denzel Washington for sure. Oh, dude, yeah. Denzel. Um, his son is killing it right his now. His son, Dave. Oh man. Have you David. seen? Uh, have you had a chance to go see Tenet yet? I haven't seen He's it. He's really good in it. Okay. He's really. Yeah, good. I have to check it out. Yes, but definitely Denzel Washington. Um, Nate Parker. He's one of my favorite actors. Okay. And um, I actually got the opportunity to meet him two years ago. Really? Yeah. When I went to L.A., he is a family friend and. Oh, um, cool. My the family member knows that I am a huge fan of his, uh-huh. and so they oh, that's cool. set they it up, and I was able to meet him. And he was so nice; he was so genuine. Um, didn't even know me, but allowed me into his home. Yeah, that's and so cool. Yeah, man, it was just like um, it probably felt like a dream, right? It did. Like- it almost that's what I was gonna <laughs> say. It almost didn't even feel real because. Yeah. Like, this is somebody who I've looked up to for a long time. Um, and I even have a notebook that is, I call it like my manifestation notebook. Like uh-huh. I, you know, I have my affirmations in there. Yeah. I have like people in there who I want to work with. And, um, but I put in that notebook in 2015 that like Nate Parker is going to be like my mentor and like a big brother to me. And, you oh, know, that's so cool. and I was able to show him that, you uh-huh. know, and he was just like, wow. Like, you know, cause I think sometimes we forget that like, you know, celebrities or actors or you know whoever they're just regular people yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what i mean like they regular people and you know that's just their job mm-hmm. you know and so i think for him i don't know how he felt but in that moment it was just kind of like wow like that's that's crazy now i don't that's know if he's so ever cool. seen that before but i was yeah. able to share that that moment with him man and um yeah hopefully i'll get to work with him you know hopefully one day soon, you know yeah. whether it's acting or a part of a, a movie that he directs or you know just yeah his career man and what he's been able to do and i'm a huge fan of period pieces yeah so like i love like um when he did birth of a nation Uh and you know i just love those type of movies like those are like my favorite you know so um yeah man nate parker for sure um gosh ava duvernay like directors director wise ava duvernay been killing it um i actually got the opportunity to to work with her i was uh Wait, what i was a background extra for selma oh that's right i think you've told yeah. me this before yeah, yeah i was a background um background extra for selma when was that was in that 2015 15 15, yeah. 15 2015 or maybe four i think it was 14 and it came out it came out 15 yeah, yeah. yeah but i had just like graduated from college i had just moved back home and um you know i knew acting was what i wanted to do with my life yeah. you know and I really didn't have at that time much experience on set. And Uh so I was just trying to kind of get a feel for what set was like Mm -hmm. and things like that, you know? And so I, I did it, man. I, I I submitted for it and I got it. And it was just being a part of that movie, like really like changed my life because, you know, you you can say in your mind, Oh, I want to be an actor. I want to be an actor. I want to be an actor, but to actually see like production and see how things work and like, you know, and I was just an extra, but I was soaking everything in, yeah. you know, because I knew like this is what I wanted to be a part of. And then to be a part of that story, you know, mm-hmm. Dr. Martin Luther King and, um, 
getting to see Oprah on set and Tyler Perry. Oh, really? You got on to see set. Oprah. Yeah, and Oprah was on actually set? in. Oh, man, Oprah was actually a part of the scene that I was in. So she was so close oh, cool. to me, oh, you know, like, and she was so like. I mean, she's Oprah Winfrey. You know yeah. what I mean? One of the biggest people in the world. You know. Yeah. You can just say um, Oprah and people know who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, like you just, you can't really do just that say Oprah. People. Yeah, right. Um, but even though she was such a, she's such a big star in that moment, like it, it was almost like she, hum like, I mean, she's human, but like yeah. she was so humble on set, you know, oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. she was working, you know, and everyone was like starstruck, like, oh my God, like it's Oprah, it's Oprah. And she's like in her scene and she's working and she's killing it. And it's like. In the scene, we had to get on our knees and we had to put our hands behind our head, you okay. know, and like, it's almost like, oh my goodness, like you want to protect her, like, no, don't get on the <laughs> ground, you know, like that type of thing. But it's like, no, like, you don't, know, like, you don't have to do that. But like, you know, she didn't have a stand in and like, you know yeah. what I mean? It was just, it was beautiful, man. It That's was beautiful. Awesome. That set was beautiful. That movie was beautiful. And, um... I was featured in it, you know, yeah. like when when it came out, I was able to see myself in oh, it, dude, and that's awesome. Uh, that that scene, man, and um, it just it's, it was just motivating for me, yeah. you know, saying that hey, like this is you're on the right path, you know, like yeah. just keep going, like you know, yeah, you're you're just starting off, and I and a lot of people don't know, I started acting when I was 25, like mm -hmm. well, started acting professionally when yeah. I was 25, you mm -hmm. know, I didn't grow up um, doing theater or, you know, I didn't have any acting training when I was younger. Mm -hmm. um, I just had a, a dream. Like at 14, I, I said out loud, like, hey, I want to be an actor, you know, but just being very honest, like growing up, you know, here in Huntsville, Alabama, during that time, there was no type of classes like that offered, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and honestly, you know, in this town in Huntsville, you know, everyone, they don't, I'm not going to, during that time, it may be a little yeah. different now, but during that time, nobody was pushing their children to be artists. No, yeah, you know? for sure. It's People, like it's not because they're like, you know, art is art is evil. It's just because yeah. art is not going to be able to, you know, pay the bills. Exactly. Because sometimes they don't realize that they think, oh, you have to live in Los Angeles, you have to live in New York mm -hmm. for that to be possible, right. and you can't go do that. Right. It's like, well, actually, no. It's moving down here, and you can do it anywhere now. Yeah, because of technology. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So growing up for me, man, I just you know I I love entertainment. Mm -hmm. I, I loved you know as a kid I was always entertaining you know someone doing something whether I was yeah. making a joke or if uh -huh. I was like you know doing something silly or you know I it was so crazy I just moved and I was looking at this box full of pictures that I have and mm -hmm. I was like you know I live in I'm from back in the day where people write on your pictures in the back and they yeah. say all these things about you and stuff. And like a lot of people were like, Oh, you're so funny. You're so funny. That's you're awesome. so funny. And I'm like, man, like I forgot those times, you yeah. know? Um, but I just love it, man. I love putting a smile on people's face. And then I also love the medical field. Yeah. I also love like plastic surgery and, and, um, doctors and nurses and like, just, you know, people look at me probably wouldn't even know that I like that type of stuff. Yeah. You know? So when I um, got in high school, I just made the decision that, like, you know, I'm going to go the medical route. Uh -huh. Because, again, nobody's really, during that time, pushing your, your children to be artists. Yeah. And, you know, again, it's, you know, you could be a, a doctor, a lawyer, you know, you could be a police officer, you can be an engineer, or you, you know, you can be a nurse or a teacher. But nobody was like, oh, you can be an actor, you know, yeah. or you can play sports. You know, sports was really big in my family yeah. and music, but nobody was like actor, actor, You know what's actor. funny about that is like being a professional athlete, I would say, is like on the same level as, as being like a professional actor. Yeah. But like, but people tend to yeah. say... You know, being you can do that. You can you can go right. to school and do this, and it's like, well, yeah. like you can do that as an actor too. As yeah, an absolutely. Like you really can. Like you know, and that's one reason why now in my life I really want to help others mm -hmm. um, pursue their dream in, as yeah. an as an actor or an artist. You know, because if it's in you, that dream doesn't die. No, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. like even when I was, you know, pursuing nursing and I was, you know, doing certain things in the medical field, that that acting was still in me yeah. you know i yeah. just didn't have the experience you mm -hmm. know i just never knew how to get it out of me but mm -hmm. it was always there in me yeah 
And so, um, so yeah, I, I went the medical route. And then when I went to college, I the first college I attended was Jacksonville State University in uh -huh. Alabama. And I was going to be a nurse. I, I had this whole plan made out when uh -huh. I was 18. And I was like, I'm going to go to Jacksonville State University. Uh -huh. I'm going to be a nurse. Once I graduate, I'm going to work at a hospital for a year. And then I'm going to be a travel nurse, you know. And so I had this whole plan of like, yeah. you know, I'm going to do that. I'm getting married, like 26, have my first kid by 28 and like had this whole plan. Right. Uh -huh. But I'm a man of faith. Yeah. And so I that was my plan, mm. you know. And then um, when I was in college, I just had a couple of in encounters with, with God. And, you know, one thing about when you're pray, you know, you have to pray and believe, you know yeah. what I mean? And so during that time, I started praying and asking God, like, you know, for Christian friends yeah. and and just the right people in my life. Because, I mean, listen, college is college. where Everybody knows what college comes with, you know what yeah. I mean? And so, you know, um, I just wasn't, I wasn't on a bad path, but mm. I was, I, I'm a chameleon. I know how to blend in with everybody. Like, yeah. I, I can be friends with anybody, you know what I mean? And so um, I wasn't, like, hanging with bad people or anything like that, but it was just... I was wanting and seeking more, you know, mm -hmm. and I just didn't know what it looked like. Yeah. And so I started asking God for Christian friends, like, you know, really just friends, but Christian friends and or people who are believers and things like that. And also too, just asking God, like, what is it that you want me to do? Like, what is your will for my yeah. life? Ultimately, you That's know, awesome. um, because I have this plan, uh -huh. you know, and, and I, I want to do it and yeah. I want to complete it. But if it, if it doesn't line up with what you want me to do, then I don't necessarily want it, yeah. you know? And so, um, fast forward to my, I was going into my, my junior year and, and during that time, nursing was very competitive. Mm -hmm. So I think during that time they were only taking about, I want to believe, I want to say it was like 60 nursing students a semester, but wow. you have like over like 500 people yeah. wanting to be nurses, you know, so it was very competitive very very competitive and i had a 3.3 gpa but when you have people who are, have like um 4.0s and yeah. 3.7s and they're getting into the nursing program it's like super competitive yeah. you know so like you know you have to step your game up and you have to you know you have to do certain things um to make sure you get the grade yeah. but during that time i like i said i was i was just seeking god and i was asking him like you know what is your will for my life and i noticed that my my friend group started to shift so I had a lot of friends. I mean, I, I knew a lot of people, um, a lot of people from home went there. And so, um, but I, at that time in my life, I noticed that God was surrounding me around different artists. And yeah. it was like people who were actors, um, people who were musicians and poets. Yeah. And like, that was the first time I felt like, like, wow, like, you know, like this is my group. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it felt like, it felt safe. It felt like this is what I needed to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a really good friend named Jesse Noel. And she was my RA, my uh -huh. sophomore year, and she was an actress. And uh, we became really close. And um, her her boyfriend at the time, Ray, uh, would come down from Atlanta. And we would all hang out. Um, and they're like two of my best friends to That's this awesome. day, man. Love like love them with all my heart. And they were very, very vital and important to my life. Um, but Jesse just told me one day, she was like, hey, like, you know, you're always around us. You know, you're always around artists and actors and things. And she was like, you have such a huge interest in it. Why don't you just try it? You know? Yeah. And I was a nursing student and I was like, I don't have time. Like mm -hmm. I'm trying to, you know, get into the nursing program. I got to study. Like, you know, I don't really have time to like do acting, you know? And she was like, well, just try it. You know, like you never know, just try it. And so I remember the next semester I added like acting 101 to my schedule, you know? So I had like all these, act these nursing classes yeah. and then I had like acting 101 um, with Susan McCain, who's a brilliant teacher, Susan McCain. Um, I think she's in Birmingham now. Mm -hmm. But I, I tried it, man. I, I, I went for it and took that course. And I felt a little insecure because yeah, I was, yeah, you know, sure. here I am in a class with people who, like, you know, they grew up doing theater yeah. or they've done musical theater or, you know, they've done at least a play or a show before. And I have no experience yeah. at this time, like, you know, nothing. And, um, I just remember just being in class thinking like, man, like, I don't know if I can do this, you know, yeah, like, because sure. everybody was already kind of focused and ready, you know, but I, I tried it and I, I, I loved that class, man. It really pushed me from, um, I think I was really shy just in that environment yeah. because I didn't really know, yeah, you it's know, funny about that is that 
all of them, even though the amount of experience they had, they were probably all pretty nervous too or yeah. insecure. Yeah. Uh, I watched it. Sorry to interrupt. I watched oh, no, this no. great uh, round table where uh, – it, I, Will Smith was on it. He just said something that cracked me up. He said, because uh, the question they asked was, do you still get nervous? And everyone around yeah. the table was like, yeah, yeah, pretty much. And yeah. Will Smith was like, if I have a big scene, like, I just get an upset stomach and I just have to go number two. Oh, like, wow. Really bad. <laughs> he's like, every single time to this day. Wow. And he's been working forever. Forever, man. So it's like, yeah. that makes me kind of like, oh, well, you know. Yeah. Will Smith still gets nervous. I can be Yeah, you can get, get nervous. nervous yeah. Too. And I was super nervous, man. And I was super shy. And... Toward the end of that semester is when I started to break out of my shell, yeah. you know. And one thing I loved about that class was that, you know, nobody judged me. You know, like yeah. everyone probably. At least not out loud. Yeah, yeah well, sure. you know. <laughs> but they were but they were encouraging. Like, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. No, 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 for sure. Oh, man. I, what's his name? He He's passed away. His name is Trey. Um, okay. Rest in peace to Trey. But I remember Trey telling me one day, he he would sit beside me in class. And I remember him I was doing like a monologue or something in class and I had just got done performing. And I, I, I guess after the performance, they could tell that I, I felt like I didn't do too well. Yeah. And so he, um, he just kind of leaned over to the side and he was just like, you know, kind of in my personal space, but you know, <laughs> it was fine. But he just looked at me. He was like, Princeton, you got it. Yeah. Oh, you know? that's awesome, man. Yeah. He was like, you got it. He was like, it's in you. You got it. You know? That's so, and I was that's like, so cool. Wow, like I I needed that, you know, and um, he was like, don't don't second don't second guess yourself, mm -hmm. you got it, you know, yeah. and I always will remember that and appreciate that because I just felt like, you know, they were all so much better than me, and you know they 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 knew what they wanted, and here I am, and just kind of unsure, you know what I mean? But that really helped me, and you know that was like a confidence booster for me, you know, and so That's, everything yeah. after that I would just give it my all, you know, and so. Um, yeah, and so after shortly after that, I um, I was still you know pursuing nursing, and so you have to take certain tests to get into the actual yeah. program. And so I was praying to God, and I said, God, you know, um, if it's your will, you know, I've I've done my part. I've studied, you mm -hmm. know, I've I've done my part. I've I've studied as much as I can, and those tests are like, you know, they're they're not easy to get into. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's nursing. You know, it's it's people's lives on the line. You know, my my fiance is is roomed up with uh, two nurses, I think, right now. Yeah. And, like, they work all the time. Man. They say it's just, like, not fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. It's, I mean, it's, it's, I it, it's, it's, it's difficult, you know. Yeah. During that time, it was, it was difficult, you know. And so, um, I took the test. Uh-huh. The HESI test. And, uh, you have to have a 75. You have to make at least a 75. Uh-huh. The first time I took it, I made a 73. Oh, wow. So I was close, you know? Yeah. Two points. And so I was thinking like, you know, and, and again, during that time, I was, you know, praying to God and saying, hey, if, if this is your will, then, you know, yeah. you, the door will open, you know? And so um, I don't I don't know if I got like super discouraged, but, it, it, you know, you want to get in the program, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, and sure. I, there was people who I started with and they were progressing and then it's like, I have to take the test again, yeah. you know? So... You know, and so... Um, How long did you have to wait to take the test again? I believe a semester. I think it was... Oh, wow. I, so, believe, yeah. I believe it was a semester. Yeah, because I remember studying for it again for like a long yeah. time. Is it one of those tests where like just writing your name down gives you 70 points? Because if so, like... Buddy, no, I buddy. wish. It was... <laughs> I wish. I was going to say, buddy. I wish. I you. wish. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I wish it was like that. <laughs> um, but then I ended up taking it again. I took yeah. it a second time. And... Um, my result was 74.3. No, wait. Are you serious? Yeah. 74.3. <laughs> and so I was like, right. you know what? At this point, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I don't know if this is the, the door for me. You know what yeah. I mean? Because I really like I, the, the type of person that I am. I don't like to start something and not finish it, you know? Yeah. And I love the medical field. Like to this day, I still love it. And so I wanted to finish. Yeah. Like I really did. Like I wanted to finish that program. I wanted to see my name on the wall and my face on the wall there, uh -huh. you know, like I did. But during that time, especially during that time for the, as I was preparing for the second test, my love for acting was growing. That's you know, awesome. I was, I wanted it. I wanted yeah. to be a part of productions and I wanted to be a part of that life, you mm -hmm. know? And, um, I, I have to be honest. I, I, I like theater 
and I, I enjoyed doing it, but I knew in my mind I wanted to do yeah, film. film. You know, TV, I wanted to yeah. be film a film and television actor is what I wanted. And they didn't offer um they didn't offer film and television classes. Yeah. You know, so you theater was what you what you had to do. Mm -hmm. And I did it and I loved it and I enjoyed it. And uh, I was only a part of one production there. But just, you know, I still have friends from that that group and that time, you know, and those That's memories, awesome. you know. But that was like my first production that I ever did. It was uh, it was called Eurydice. Okay. And it was at um, Jacksonville State University. And so um, all of that happened. And then I was like, I need a change, you know. Like, I was like, I need, I need a change. Um, there were some things going on in my personal life as well. Mm -hmm. And um, Jesse... Um, my my friend I was telling you, Jesse, uh -huh. she was my RA. She was an actress and she was about to graduate and um but Jesse connected me with her her father, Pastor Aaron James. Oh, okay. And her dad became like a mentor to me, you know, like and even to this day he's my mentor. And he would just like. I always thought I was kind of your mentor, but uh, you know, you're kind of young, and I don't really know if I trust your wisdom. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I I got connected with Pastor James, and he uh -huh. was a man of faith, and he was like a real. He was like a dad to me, you know. Yeah. Like even to this day, like because um, a lot of people don't know my 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 personal life yeah, and my story, yeah. and I and I don't mind sharing. But my, I grew up in like a single parent home, mm -hmm. you know, for most of my life. Um, it was my mom, and then I have two younger siblings that are twins. Oh, and cool! So, I didn't know that. I didn't yeah. know that they were twins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're twins, and so um, you know, I know what it's like to not have a dad present in the home. Yeah. You know, and so I had to grow up really fast. Mm -hmm. You know, I was about 13 um, when my mom and my, my stepfather, they divorced. And so, you know, at 13, I'm in middle school, you know, and so you have to be the man of the house. Yeah, and so you have to take really on young age to do all that. Stuff. Yeah. You have I to take on imagine. a lot more responsibility. Yeah. Um, so I, I never knew, I guess, I guess I never knew I needed a dad until like, Pastor James came into my yeah. life, you know, like he really fathered me and he really taught me how to be like, um, like a man, like, so you know, cool. a man and like hold the line and, mm -hmm. you know, like stand your ground yeah. and, you know, you don't compromise, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, um, uh, he taught me a lot about the word of God and, That's awesome. um, just the Bible and, and he was doing all of this, like over the phone, you know, at one, like during that time, he was just doing all of that over the phone. So it was like. I was going through a lot of transitions at this time. Yeah. Like, and this is honestly, this is my, this is my story of even how I just got into acting, you know what I mean? Cause it all is tied into one, but, um, I ended up moving to Pensacola, Florida, which is where mm -hmm. they were from. Like Jesse, um, pastor James and his family, they were all in Pensacola. And I just remember praying and I was just like, I, I, I couldn't stay at Jacksonville state, you know, like I just knew I couldn't stay there. Like, yeah. um, it wasn't bad, but it was just out. I, I just knew I couldn't stay. Well, you went sense. there and you ended up learning something that you didn't intentionally go for. So yeah. It's like God was like, you yeah. have to go here to learn something. You just don't know it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like you had to go there no matter what. Right. Right. Is, yeah. For sure. Like it was all in his plan. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. All in his plan. And so um, I ended up moving to Pensacola. And um, when I moved to Pensacola is when I started to pursue acting as far as um school wise yeah so i changed my major and i started That's studying awesome. um telecommunications and film mm -hmm. and then i got a minor in theater mm -hmm. you know because again the, the goal for me was always to be a film and television actor yeah. but i you know a, a lot of, and it, it's it's sad but most colleges don't offer like you know on camera acting classes mm -hmm. you know yeah. and sometimes you, you you have an actor who wants to do that mm -hmm. you know and not necessarily be um a broadway star exactly, or you know yeah. do theater or musicals but i love it all man i'm i love yeah. it all um so yeah i ended up moving there and changing my major and getting plugged in to pensacola and met a lot of people who are important to my life today you know a lot of my close friends still live there and um so all of that happened and then once i finished college and did everything i knew that i wanted to pursue acting as a full-time career so I moved back here to Huntsville and trained with um, some some coaches here and mm -hmm. people here and you know now kind of like doing my own thing. That's awesome, but yeah. yeah, do you want to mention what you got coming? Yeah, up, yeah, dude? for sure, for sure, for sure. So um, I am starting like my own performing arts studio mm -hmm. um, that will 
have the crafts of on-camera acting. Um, eventually, I want to have like some dance and movement in there as oh, well. Cool. And um, I can help you with that. I'm a dancer. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Yeah, I'll uh, show you after the podcast. Yeah, I need I need to see it first. <laughs> I don't know if I if I see it right now, but I need to see it first. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man. And so actually, Divine Legacy Conser- Conservatory is the name. Mm-hmm. And that's an awesome name, by the way. That thank just you. sounds like prestigious. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, the the name came from a performance that I did at UWF. So mm-hmm. when I moved to Pensacola, I attended uh, UWF University of West Florida, and that's the school I graduated from. Mm-hmm. But I was doing a performance. Um, I booked up a, uh, a play called uh, Intimate Apparel. Okay. And that was like my first. Um, well, it was like my first leading role in a major like production, yeah. like school production, you know. And so um, I was playing this character named George Armstrong and it, just completely different from who I am. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, but awesome. I really like I, I studied and my director, um, Allende, was really on me. You know what I mean? Just because the the guy is um, Caribbean, you know, he has mm-hmm. like an accent. Oh, and cool. so I had to study like these Caribbean accents and I was listening to music and watching yeah. movies and like, you know, and I, I made it believable, you know, yeah. like I made it real and I really became George Armstrong and I would never forget this um, older couple that came to see one of our performances and, you know, we get to, you know, talk to people after the show yeah. and things like that. And this older couple came up to me and they were just saying how they love the show and things. Uh-huh. But the lady said, your performance was divine. Oh, that's oh wow! What a compliment! Yeah, she was like, "Your performance was divine," and I was just, I was just thinking like, I've never heard the term used like that before, you know. Yeah. And she was like, "Divine, it was, it was great," you know. Yeah. And I was like, "Wow, like divine!" Like. I just imagined for some like her having like like a wine glass in her hand. <laughs> I was like, oh, that was divine. Well, she actually she was holding my hand. Oh, was she? Oh, yeah, she awesome, like grabbed yeah. my hand, like she like grabbed my hand and was like holding my hand and was like, you know, she was saying that and her husband was behind her. Yeah. And that name just kind of like, it always stuck with yeah. me, divine, 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 right. you know. And um, I actually have a good friend who named her daughter divine, you know. Oh, and wow. so I remember looking up the word divine and just, you know, the different meanings of it. And and, wow. and then uh, legacy came from, I, I didn't grow up hearing the word legacy a lot, you mm-hmm. know. Um, it was something that I got from Pastor James, really just uh my mentor who um you know he he really taught me that like you know it's important to leave a legacy behind yeah you know like what will you be known for Mm -hmm. you know what do what would what did you do on this earth that had an impact and what can you leave for your family you know Mm -hmm. yeah and so legacy was just another thing for me that's important you know anything and everything that i do i i want to have impact on people i want to inspire people you know i want people to say or, you know, even if, especially when it comes to acting and, and being an artist, you know, I want them to know that it's doable mm-hmm. and that you can do it and you can be successful and you can leave a legacy behind. That's awesome. That's you know? an awesome goal to have. Yeah. Like, especially here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, even in Huntsville, you know, yeah. even in Huntsville, like People that's, need to know. they need to know that, listen, you, you don't have to be an engineer. Yeah. You know, if, if you want to be an actor, you can be an actor and you can be successful, you know, and that's my heart's desire. Like, that's why... As much as acting can be hard mm-hmm. and like tough, I can't quit. No, yeah, yeah you yeah. know, like I am fully committed to this industry, mm-hmm. and I'm fully committed to the people who look up to me because I don't want them to give up on their dreams yeah. if that's their dream, mm-hmm. you know. And I want them to know that you can be successful whether you are an actor and you're you're doing other people's projects or you're an actor and a writer and you're you have your own content. Mm-hmm. It's doable, you know, and so. Um, yeah, Divine Legacy, that's the name. And then Conservatory, because I didn't want to limit like it just being one thing. You know, like Conservatory in my mind is like all of the arts. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like a place where you can embrace all of the arts. And so I just put it together, Divine Legacy Conservatory. Yeah, that's so, awesome. I, again, I love that name. Yeah. What's your slogan? <laughs> just do it. It's just doable. do it. Well, you know, just do it is just, already, you know, it's kind of Nike already. Oh, man. But yeah, I don't really have a slogan right now, but. Um, oh, you know what would be good? Uh, the Divine Legacy Conservatory, the Sampley way. <laughs> the Sampley way. <laughs> we'll have the Sampley technique the, a part of our that, production. That, that will be a fee if you want to use that one, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah. But I'm excited, man. I'm um, so excited for you, dude. 
it's you know it, it's something that's been in, in my heart for a while and um i really want to be able to help you know kids and even adults as well man that you know may have had that dream and it, yeah. it it's gone now you know yeah and I just, again, like I said, I want to inspire people and give them another option. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, again, when I was growing up, it wasn't like I had a lot of options. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like, again, you do engineering, you do medical field, you know, you play sports or you, you play music. You know, there yeah. was nothing about acting. There was nothing about dancing. You yeah. know, there was nothing about being a poet or a painter. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of people out there who are successful in those areas yeah. and who can provide for their families mm -hmm. and who are, will be able to leave a legacy behind yeah. doing those things, you know? Yeah. So, and um, you don't necessarily have to work for a government, you know, and I'm not shading any of those other careers, you know, because yeah, 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 I have yeah. friends and family members and I, you know, I'm a person that I listen, whatever your dream is, what can we do to make it happen? Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, how can I help you reach, you know, that success or whatever it may be, you mm -hmm. know, but I'm just saying like for those people who feel like they just have to do those things, mm -hmm. you don't have to, yeah. you know, like if you can, you, you can be an actor and be successful, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and just because you live in the South doesn't mean that you can't be successful. You know, I mean, yeah. I've done a lot of projects. I haven't done a lot of big name projects, mm -hmm. you know, but I've done a lot of independent projects and I've done, um, a lot, you know, I've done a few commercials and things like that, but I'm a working actor, yeah. you know, and nobody can take that from me. Yeah. Like I work, yeah. you know what I mean? And I put in the work, you know? Oh yeah. You, so you do, man. I've noticed <laughs> a lot of other people. Thank noticed. you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like I was telling you before I was taping Alex Haynes here Yes. for an audition and, uh, I was like, Oh, did you see, uh, what Princeton posted on Facebook? He was like, yeah, man, I'm really excited for that. He was like, uh, Princeton actually taught a class that I was in once. And he is just like, he's just so, pa you can just tell he's so passionate about it. And he just made me like really dig down deep. Whatever, wow. whatever you guys were doing, I think you guys were just like getting up and reading sides. But like you weren't, you weren't like happy with like his minimal effort or something that he said. Like mm -hmm. you were like, no, do it again. Just keep, keep yeah. digging down. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think a lot of people are going to be excited yeah. whenever you open. Any date or anything? Yeah, so I don't have an official date yet. Um, everything is really still in development, yeah. you know, with, with Divine Legacy. Um, I just wanted the people to know that it's coming. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, that's it, man. It, it's, it's coming, man. And it's going to shift some things, too, within the city for me. Yeah. I think that... Um, you know, a lot of people aren't doing what I'm doing, you know, uh -huh. and I want to collab with people like yeah. I don't want Divine Legacy to just be like a me thing. Yeah. But I want to like I want to collaborate with different um, directors and producers and actors and actresses and dancers and musicians in the city of that's Huntsville, awesome. you know, yeah. and I want it to really be like a, a place that's safe and also just inspiring, you know, because the thing is this like. I'm an actor and I, I work and so I have to travel a lot. You know, we, we go to Atlanta a lot. You know, yeah. we go to New Orleans a lot. You yep. know, um, I've been to South Carolina for an acting commercial, you know, so we have to do a lot of traveling and do certain things there. But, you know, what if people came to Huntsville yeah. to be a part of our productions, yeah. you know, or to there's so much local talent here. But nobody knows them, you yeah. know, but what if we put our own city on the map? You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of the thing that I'm seeing. Like, you know, there's a bunch of actors. Like, I see a lot of people even on their little TikTok videos. I'm like, they have potential. Yeah. Like, you know, like they they can do this. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And they probably want to do it and just don't know how. Just don't know how. Yeah. Yeah. Like people inbox me all the time about, you know, who is your agents or how did you get started? You know, and. And what was the process like, you know, and these are not even like kids, like adults, yeah, adults you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. or I always wanted to um, do that or, you know, how do I get started? Or, you know, like, it's just all of these questions all the yeah. time, you yeah. know what I mean? And I'm like, I can't just sit on this information, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, I want to share it, you know what yeah, I mean? And I want to awesome. let them know that, hey, you know, it's not an easy industry to be a part of, it's but not, it's, no. it's doable, you know what I mean? You can work, you know, so. Yeah, you... Uh, in this industry, you have to work as hard as you know if you're getting a degree at you know yeah. college somewhere else for a different thing you're going for. Yeah. It's uh, it's not just show up to class and you're no. a movie star. 
You gotta work really, 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 really. You have really, to really, work really, really hard. hard. You have to work hard. <laughs> like it's. That's why you know. You have to want it, and something that you, yeah, you know, vision board. I got one in my room. Like yeah. that helps immensely. Yeah, and I was gonna also say too, like you have to protect your dream and your vision. Yeah, you know because a lot of people, if you're not li- actually living in the industry, they will think that like acting as a as a career is something it's just a hobby yeah it's like oh that's that little acting thing yeah no 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 no. it's not little yeah. like you know we work hard yeah you know like sacrificing my sundays for six years to train yeah multiple hours a day that's yeah. plus the miles plus the, the miles gas. of driving and hotel yeah. and like you know updating your headshots every yeah. once in a while you know um taking workshops and Connecting with different casting directors like mm. this is not an easy industry, you know, and yeah. it's not something to be taken lightly. Yeah, you know, and you made a good point. You have to want it. Yeah, you, have you to know, really want it. You have to want it, and you have to know what you want. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm an actor, and like I said, I enjoy stage, I enjoy commercials and things like that. But I know I want to be a film and yeah. television actor, you know, and that's what I want to be known for. So I have to put in that work yeah. to do that. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And so with any, and I know it's with anything, whether you want to be an engineer or a doctor, everybody has to put in work. But sometimes you you encounter people and they make it just seem like, oh, you're just an actor. Like, mm-hmm. like it's just this little thing. And it's like, no, yeah. sir. Like, I, this is blood. This is sweat. This is tears. This is sacrifice. Yeah. Like, you know, I've. This isn't like a book club. No. You know it, I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, um. Or choir group at church. This is a yeah, more it's than that. it's yeah. work, man, and it's it's not easy. Like you know, I've you know I've been in re- relationships that I've had to sacrifice. You know, like mm-hmm. there was a girl I dated um, a few years ago who I loved, man. I like you know I loved her, you know, yeah. and you know wanted to marry her. Was looking at rings, oh, wow. you know, and like. I wanted that life because another one of my desires is to be married yeah. and, and to be a dad. You know yeah, what I mean? that's an awesome goal to have. But I knew I wanted an acting career, you know, and um, the the re- relationship was long distance. And so I knew I would have to sacrifice yeah. some things. And I just wasn't ready to sacrifice my career at that time, yeah. you know. And so, you know, we had conversations and, you know, she ended the relationship because of that, uh-huh. you know, but she understood. Yeah, she was yeah, like, yeah. you know, listen, you know, you, you, you just graduated college, you know, you, you know, you want to be an actor. I don't want to hold you back from that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I know I want to be a mom and get married soon and do all of these things. And so like, I'm not going to like pressure you to yeah. try to make this work. You know what I mean? Like you have your dreams and goals. I have mine, you mm-hmm. know, and I loved her. Like I wanted that relationship to work, but Absolutely. it just wasn't, it just wasn't, you know, it, it just didn't happen that way. You know yeah. what I mean? And so with even this career path, it's a lot of sacrifice, you know? Yeah. You sacrifice time from your family and your friends. Like, you know, I would love to go on vacation. Well, you know, not right now during this pandemic. Yeah. But before, like, you know, a lot of my friends, they do a lot of trips and, you know, certain things. And, you know, a lot of times I, I can't go and I can't do it because I'm working, you know, I'm auditioning, yeah. you know, or I'm. You know, I have to train classes and do yeah. certain things, you know, or take certain workshops. And it's just the timing doesn't match up, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot of sacrifice in this. So, you know, I, the mentality of like acting or doing anything or just a little music thing like that has to change. You yeah. know what I mean? Because we put in a lot of work. Yeah. You know, absolutely. so. Yeah. Dude, it's been just fantastic just talking to you. I mean, I can just sit here and listen to you all man, day at this point. Man, thank you for having me, man. Dude, uh, uh, thank you for being willing to do it. I'm so also happy because yeah. originally uh, I was going to have you on like last month or maybe even yeah. sometime before that. Yeah. And so it's great now, though, because you got like the Divine Legacy like set up and stuff yeah. like that out there. It's yeah. out there on the interwebs. Yeah. So we can like talk about it and share yes. it and stuff. So I'm yes. really excited yes. that, you know, it's God's timing that we got to sit down yes, today and man. do it. Thank you again for having me, man. But, uh, um, I, yeah, thank you so much for coming, man. I, yeah. You're a great friend. A- anyone you. who's probably listening to this is probably whatever they were doing there now. Like, even, yeah. if, they, even if their dream is not to be an actor, they're they're already submitting for our agency. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, I'm gonna do it. Whatever it is I you do out there, you yeah, know, yeah. Whatever just, you do is just like you yeah. gotta put your whole heart into put it. Put your just, whole heart in it. Yeah. But um, and don't let anyone stop you. Like, don't let um, you know, don't let the words of others 
and oh, even yeah. their opinions, you know, deter you from the goal. Unless it's me. If it's coming from me, you better you know, listen. Let me, tell you, let me tell y'all something about sampling. Now, you might get y'all off course. Y'all might want to not listen. No, uh, I'm a um, tricky guy. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, whatever you do, just do it with 100%. And um, even if it gets hard, keep going, man. Yeah. Keep going. I know a lot of people who I started with when it comes to acting who have quit. Yeah, it sucks to see that. It's, it's, yeah. For me, anyways, it seems sometimes it's the most talented people. The most that talented. That end up quitting. Yeah. And then you see like the people that you know were okay, and then now they're like amazing because yeah. like they had just that crazy work ethic yes. that put yes. that they put into it. Yes, you have to have that burning desire, that that fire. Um, I don't know we're wrapping up, but I just want to yeah. share this no, no, really no, quick. Yeah. Um, that the play that I was talking about, Intimate Apparel. Mm -hmm. That was a shift for me yeah. doing that play. Um, I had done two plays before that, uh -huh. and this is when I was still in college. But that play um, shifted for shifted me on the inside because I was wanting that. You know, people always say, "Oh, well, when did when did when did your passion for acting happen?" Mm -hmm. You know, and for me, it was the first time. It was the last show of that play, but there was like a fire in my belly. Yeah. Like I. And it maybe it could have been a couple of nerves. I don't know. Sometimes I get nervous, but there was just something very different that day. Like it was like I'm putting on a performance, and I don't know if this is my last performance ever yeah. or not. So I'm gonna give it my all. And throughout that entire performance, there was a fire in my belly that would not go away. Yeah. Like it was like I was burning. Like every every line, awesome. every movement, every scene um, with my my scene partners um, that was that was a part of that play. There was like this fire in my belly, man. And I remember. Um, just like, ah, like it was like I wanted to scream, you know what I mean? But it was that 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 passion for what I was doing and I wanted it, you yeah. know what I mean? And again, that was another moment for me where I was like, I want to do this for the rest of my life, That's you know? Awesome. And um, in the play, I my my uh, scene partner, Shannon Hemmings, uh, who played Esther in the play, we um, we have to do like some physical stuff. Like she like has to slap me, right? Okay. In the play, it's toward the end of the play. Yeah. Um, and everyone should read it. It's a it's an amazing play called Intimate Apparel by Lynn Nottage. But uh, Shannon, I don't know if she was feeling the same thing I was feeling, but like that slap that night, man, yeah, she it. slapped some fire out of me. Yeah. Like she slapped me so hard in that scene that like, you know, if you've ever been like hit super hard, like you hear the echo, like. <laughs> did you have a beard at that time? No, I didn't have a beard. Be a so I was bare face. Oh, it was like, like I felt like my jaw might have been broken. Like yeah. she, because the, we were so into it. We were so in sync oh and God. we were so intense that like, like. That's great. She slapped me and it was like, oh, like, wow, wow. Like, you know, you don't want to be hit like that again. Nope. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm saying like, whatever you do, man, yeah. make sure you have that that fire, that burning yeah. passion on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. Do it and complete it and just be done with yeah. it, you know? Just to add on a little something, something that, like, really clicked for me a couple of years back. Like, I, I had a passion, but, like, it's, like, literally, I just remember this moment. I was sitting in bed and I was reading this book called uh, Building a Character. It's the sequel to An Actor Prepares by Konstantin yeah. Stanislavski. Mm -hmm. I was, like, halfway through, and something that he said was... um. Um, to be an actor is to serve. Mm. Like, and I was just like, I remember just like, I legit like stood up on my bed and I was like, that's what acting is. It's yes. just like to serve. And like, ever since then, I've just had even this bigger passion. Um, so just little things like that. Yeah. Fine. But, yeah. um, uh, is there anything else you want to say or shout anyone else out or? If you're good, no. good man. Uh, so thank you guys so much for yeah. listening. Uh, thank you uh, so much for those who just keep coming back. I really appreciate it. Yes. Thank you so much for. Uh, I got a couple uh, subscribers, some people throwing some money my way. I really appreciate that, uh, especially during this uh, this trying yes, time. Man. So for those people that are doing it, uh, thank you so much. Yes. And if you're interested in doing that, just check out uh, on the uh, Anchor website. Uh, you just look up my podcast and you see details if you're interested in that. But thank you so much, Princeton, for coming yes, on. Yes, thank you again for right. having me. Um, everyone follow me on social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give you a shout out on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. So um, Instagram, my Instagram name is I am Princeton Drake. Um, 
on Instagram and yeah. then on Facebook it's my first name Princeton last name Drake yeah and when I when I do the story on my Instagram I'll like put I'll mention you and then I'll like I'll oh say go sure follow okay too, yeah nice just in case people um have short term memory but um uh thank you so much uh yes can I go ahead and show you my dancing now you know what I might skip and do this on next no I'm just kidding right. go ahead go ahead <laughs> let me let me see what you got let me see what you got All right.